Hello? We're starting! Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for that uh, assistance. Yeah, so um, this session is being, um, it's a pre-recorded session, uh, but we'll be likely time for questions at the end. Um, I'm just going to introduce it. Um, essentially, um, it's people from the same team that I work on, Trust and Safety Product. Um, there'll be a video we'll discuss about temporary accounts. Um, yeah, so questions at the end, I, you can come and ask me. Um, so, yeah, I think we can ready to play the video now. Yeah. And welcome to our session today on temporary accounts, the project formerly known as IP masking. My name is Maddie. I'm an attorney for the Wikimedia Foundation working in privacy. My co-presenter is Naharka, a pro product manager in the trust and safety product team, which is the team leading out on the work for temporary accounts. Today's presentation is a sequel of sorts to our presentation at last year's Wikimedia. Some of the information we cover will be the same to make sure that anyone who missed last year's session can approach the topic with the same background information. Our rationale for the project remains the same for example, whereas our approach has some key updates in terms of who can access IP addresses. We also have some important development updates since last year that Naharka will cover. <clears throat> After this pre-recorded portion, we will have time for your questions and our answers live. Please use the either pad to record questions you have as the session progresses, and we can be sure to cover them in the Q&A. So why temporary accounts? As you probably already know, on the Wikimedia projects, anyone can edit. There are two basic ways people can edit. The first is by logging into an account with a username of their own choosing. The second is editing while not logged into an account, which edits with edits attributed to an IP address. These different paths to editing come with different ways our sites handle IP addresses of our users. For editors who are logged in, their IP addresses are only stored for 90 days and are not shared with the public. For editors who are not logged in, their IP addresses are stored forever and shared with the public. This has been the status quo for a long time. We detail this in our privacy policy and data retention guidelines. Here are some screen captures of how IP addresses are shown to the public. On the left is a user talk page for a shared IP address. On the right is an IP address shown in a page's edit history. So why is this a problem? IP addresses are personal data. We cover this in our privacy policy um, that they can be used to personally identify people. And how we collect, use, and share personal data is subject to various laws. We've also seen over the past few years that these laws are, are growing. There's more and more of these laws being proposed, being enacted, and um, privacy is an increasingly regulated space. Our current status quo presents various risks, both for these legal risks, as well as surveillance risks to our users and falling short of our user expectations. We regularly hear from users who are surprised that their IP address is logged in this way and shown publicly, even though there are warnings on our sites that it's going to happen. While addressing those risks, we also have to consider what our users need to protect the projects. IP addresses have been an invaluable tool when dealing with harassment, abuse, and vandalism. We don't want to make any changes without giving the communities appropriate mechanisms to handle this impact. Ultimately, the project has been working towards a new system, though, in which our editor data is handled with greater consistency. For editors who are not logged into an account, this means our IP addresses will not be stored forever, and the IP addresses will no longer be publicly available. This is what will shift. Um, this is where we shift into a high level overview of how that will be achieved, covering what temporary accounts are and who will have access to IP addresses of these users. Temporary accounts are a new type of identity on our sites, a new user account type that will replace IP editing. Temporary accounts, temporary accounts will have an automatically created username and will be tied to a cookie on the user's browser, lasting as long as the cookie lasts. Users who are not logged into a permanent account will no longer have their edits attributed to an IP address publicly. Multi IP addresses can be linked to one temporary account. Users who meet certain criteria will still be able to reveal IP addresses so they can complete their anti-vandalism and anti-harassment work. The criteria for seeing these IP addresses is outlined in the next slides. Certain users will have access to these IP addresses for temporary accounts on individual or local Wikimedia projects in order to protect those projects. Check users and oversiders will have local access rights, for example, by default. Admins and bureaucrats will be able to opt in for access. And for patrollers who opt in, they will also be able to access um, these IP addresses as long as they've made at least 300 edits to the project, um, to that local project, and their account is at least six months old. This part is where we kind of shift from our presentation last year. There's now a global access option. Um, rather than lumping everyone in and use global access and local access, uh, the team has been working on a global opt-in. Because certain users will have access um, and they need to have it on a global basis in order to prevent cross-wiki abuse effectively. So stewards, ombuds, and staff will have global access by default. Um, the user groups of global SISOPs, global rollbackers, and abuse filter maintainers and helpers will have access through a global opt-in. 
Check users and oversighters will also have access to a global opt-in in addition to their automatic, automatic local access. That's a lot of details, but you can refer back to them at any time to the access policy page listed on this slide. It is on the Foundation um, Governance Wiki um, website as well, and that is that. So IP addresses will only be accessible to users who meet those requirements. This does not include public access. Users who do not qualify can still use the IP info feature as long as they are at least auto-confirmed. Marika will cover a little bit more about the IP info feature in her slides. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Miharika Kahui, and I am the lead product manager working on the temporary accounts project. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the trust and safety product team, and I'll give you a walkthrough of the work we've done so far and what's coming next. Before we go into the uh, different designs here, I wanted to highlight some key design principles we kept in mind while designing the temporary editor experience. We wanted to make sure that temporary accounts have access to the same editing experience as current IP editors do. We don't want this transition to feel jarring or disruptive to them. Um, but at the same time, we wanted temporary accounts to feel ephemeral, short-lived. Uh, we don't want uh, editors to feel that by creating an account, uh, they're getting a permanent identity. Uh, these accounts are temporary by nature. They're tied to a cookie, like Maddie mentioned earlier in this presentation. Um, and they persist as long as the cookie does. Um, so that could go away at any time. Um, we also highlight incentives for creating an actual account and nudging users towards it uh, by offering them uh, features like watch list and preferences if they do sign up for an account. Uh, we also wanted to make it very clear that by creating a temporary account, uh, we're no, in no way saying that you need to give us your information or you need to create an account. Um, it, anybody can still edit. This is a temporary account that is automatically created. We're still not asking anybody for their details to uh, vault. And then lastly, we want to make sure that there is guidance and education about the reasons for this change. Uh, this is done for enhancing user privacy uh, and we want to highlight the, the changes. Um, this slide talks about the temporary editor experience. Uh, upon the first edit uh, after temporary uh, accounts rollout, an IP editor, non-logged in editor would be told that they are going to end up creating a temporary account after their edit. Um, and going forward, their edits will be attributed to this temporary account. Uh, there will also be a help link for them to know more about it. Um, Another thing to note in the second screenshot here is the gray banner on the top. Temporary editors will see this gray banner on top of the screen, uh, which highlights their temporary account username. Um, and there will also be a pop-up for the first time they edit. Um, the format chosen for temporary account username is tilde, followed by the year of creation of the temporary account, followed by an auto-incrementing number. Uh, this format came about after a lot of discussion and deliberation with community members. Um, and the reason for including the year is so that it is an easy identifier for how old a temporary account might be. And so is it if it's worth um, engaging with them, blocking them, and so on. Temporary accounts do expire. So after a point in time, temporary accounts, a given temporary account may no longer be active. In the following slides, I will be talking about all of the changes we have made uh, to enhance the patrolling workflows, uh, especially when it comes to temporary accounts. So IP reveal is arguably one of the most important workflows. Uh, a subset of users will have access to reveal IP addresses, as mentioned by Maddie earlier in this presentation. Um, after they check a preference, uh, opting in to reveal IP addresses, users will be able to see this show IP button next to temporary accounts. Um, I want to mention that some users will have that access access by default and no longer don't need to check that preference. Um, so once revealed, uh, an IP, a temporary account IP will stay, will persist as revealed across the entire website for a period of 24 hours. Um, this action of revealing will be logged uh, for anti-abuse purposes. Blocking temporary accounts. Blocking temporary accounts will work very similar to how blocking a, an account, user account, or IP or IP range works. 
um, in the special block form, uh, an admin will be able to look up a temporary account just as easily as any other username. Uh, blocking temporary accounts will block just that one temporary account, and this will be a cookie-based block. what's going on but um, the Haraka is looking at the video just to check what might be going on. It's pre-recorded but she's aware she's looking at the video. that it, it's sort of somewhat a replacement for the global user contributions tool that exists on Toolforge, um, but allows you to look for IP addresses data and see temporary accounts for that. So essentially, previously, you could use a global user contributions tool on Toolforge on an IP address, see IP edits. This just replaces it, allow, gives feature parity. So... Yeah, so I, th I think there might be like a MediaWiki specific inbuilt tool that might might be able to replace the existing tool. But it's been there for months. Now. Yeah. Yeah, so um, essentially you could probably rework what's on the slide, but we've got a loads and loads of things we're doing. Um, essentially, abuse filter, as already mentioned, global blocks. It's actually something I worked on. And we can now globally block accounts, so you don't have to use locking. And that's a brilliant feature, I think. But uh, So yeah, there's, there's loads of different things we're working on, um, essentially all to make sure that there's going to be very little difference. Or if there is difference, it's going to be positive. And if it's negative, then we're going to have to try and find ways to get around it. Essentially, we don't want to make this a problem for you. We just want to make it so it's easier to deal with, in some cases better. Yeah, so you can see a roadmap there. This is our kind of plan of the idea of what we're gonna do. Um, essentially, that's the idea there. Um, but we're, there's, there's some certain things about like pilot wikis and making sure we've got it done, ready. There's also some other dependencies on other teams that makes it, sometimes we just have to fit things in, fit things in, in a way that makes sense. So don't worry, it's not coming tomorrow, but it's still coming soon, so. If you have something that depends on IP addresses for its like the entire existence and you haven't told us about it, tell us about it. Is it possible 
Um, I'm not sure it's possible to enlarge it. You, the, the slide should be available on um, event. on uh, event. Yeah, it's, so you should be able to look at that. If you if you would like, um, so I can read it out just so test week de deployments complete. Um, October 2024 is uh, finalized feature implementation. That's the same with me. I can't really read it. Um, yeah. So oh, it's just a bit. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 2025, yeah, so that's that. But we're, again, these are very dates that we, we're sort of thinking about. We're not, no firm dates. We will inform communities when it starts to happen. Um, it, we will be involved. There will be discussions. Yeah, so as we can see here, rolled out very carefully. Okay, so that's the end of the, the pre recorded presentation. Um, everyone in the channel is already panicking about this, not the audio thing, but there we go. <laughs> the unexpected challenge. Yeah, so I believe that there will be questions, and I think some of the, um, there will be people in the Zoom that would like to answer them potentially. Does the temporary account name sticks across different languages and projects, or are they like independent of each other? Okay, yeah, so I, can, I think I can answer this one. So temporary accounts will stick around. So at the moment, you can only have a temporary account on Test Wikipedia. And which means if you try and use a temporary account on another wiki, it won't allow you. When we've deployed it to more than one wiki, any wiki with temporary accounts enabled, it will be treated like a registered user account. So if you go to another wiki, it will be the same name. So it means you can go to central auth and look at all the accounts a temporary account has and then go, okay, there's their contributions. So in some ways, it's very similar to a normal account. It's just, it's temporary, there's no password, you can't log into it, so yeah. And then okay, so I just have one curious because the temporary account I know I I was like have a concern, but like that that concerns have been solved by the administrators looking IP. That concern was raised in Kotakina Valley before, and so now my concern is this: so if we administrators intend to block the IP address, then what happens to users' visibility like for that? I think that needs to be resolved. I'm not sure you guys you have an answer right now. If not, this needs to be resolved. Yeah, so there's, there's, a, there's a lot of legal things about the visibility of IP addresses and the visibility of names. We're trying to make it such that you can, it, it's possible for people that need to see it to see it. Um, I think that's, it. Th there'll be more information, I think, um, coming soon about that kind of thing. There's a lot of unresolved legal questions. Yeah? Yeah, um, maybe I've missed it during the presentation, but um, uh, I wanted to make people aware that there are also help pages from your team for developers on how to improve their tools. Right now, they're uh, mostly focused on API and PHP improvements, uh, while I myself uh, usually doing JavaScript and other things uh, like gadgets. Um, but you will find help also to, to improve your tools, uh, mm -hmm. to adapt them to temporary accounts, because it's definitely a, a huge change in how we uh, access uh, users. Yes, no, I agree. Thank you for raising that. Um, Shimon um, has done a great job of creating all these pages, and we have been very clear that we need to make a lot of documentation. So, we've, yeah, look on, look on MediaWiki. You'll find help pages. Awesome. Thank you. Um, two small questions. Like one, uh, if there's been sort of any conversation of making those IPs available to the user, uh, assuming they're able to, to sort of see it in, in preferences and the like, but also sort of I think the biggest problem I see from the temporary account question is depending on where you are and what your IPs, um, how your IP is given to you, it may actually be easier to delete a cookie and get a new temporary account than it may actually be to change an IP. Um, have we looked at, considered knowing some of the consequences and discussion about it, um, some level of fingerprinting and sort of keeping an account that can stick around, especially if, especially if it gets blocked and sort of become a little viral so that if they try to pop around, um, they can get caught to make it a little bit easier for admins? Yes, so um, the visibility of IP addresses for all users is important. We are working on, there's a look, be ability for local wikis to define their own requirements. I think we slightly changed it around, but they'll, patrollers will be able to be get access to it as long as they agree to the policy. Um, as to your second point on like the idea about like what happens if they just delete the cookie, yeah, I mean, that's the unfortunate thing. It's an account, you can just delete your cookie. However, we are, work we are thinking about it, we've thought about it. So for example, the global of locks that was mentioned on the slides just before, as part of that, we're looking to implement global auto blocks. 
That will then block the IP address automatically. We are looking for other ways maybe in the future to think about other ways to auto block. But the idea being that we are thinking about it. It's very important. However, what we, could, what, we suggest, what we are able to see is that for a large, some of the majority of people, they won't know, oh, I can clear my cookies to get a new temporary account. They'll just see a block notice. They'll go, OK, fair enough. But you are right. People will clear their cookies. People will switch devices. It's something we're working on. That's why we're doing things like device fingerprinting, things like this. It's all linked into the same idea of IP addresses kind of need to be less used for blocking. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, yeah, hello. It's Renvoy from Ombuds Commission, and uh, it's always a bit different perspective mm -hmm. from my side because um, I'm a bit on the fence on this. Uh, on the one as a hand, like it's it's very good that we do not have we will not have this APs just floating around, generally like uh, visible for everyone. But on the other hand, I think it opens up a big amount of other possibly problems, legal issues, because right now if some check user reveals like IP address of certain user, yeah, he will be warned and it's like it's a violation of the policies. However, what will happen like if patroller that have access to this IP address uh, like reveals it or just writes in somewhere in the wiki? Mm -hmm. Is it like is it violation of privacy policy? Is it violation of uh, access to non public personal information policy? Um, I'm not sure. Like, and uh, some may some may argue then yes. So we will have tens of probably a hundred more cases, uh, workloads, and all of that stuff. And um, yeah, I'm not sure how to address it because, on one hand, yeah, we need this visibility to block uh, vandals, LTAs, and um, all not not very good thing. But on the other hand, yeah, it's uh, it's this legal issues as well like if it's hidden it will be revealed at some point and how to address that and to because all the policies need to be basically rewritten for it yeah so i think from what i'm aware of maddie's in the in the zoom call so that maddie might be the best to answer this from legal as point of view um i'll just see if they're able to answer um if not um i can give a little bit more so i mean we, we, we are working on it it's i think from what from what i see as an engineer it's very difficult because, again, it's like check user where you can't share the IP address. But I think I see some people appearing on the Zoom screen, so potentially there'll be an answer. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, look, I'm on the screen. Hello. It's 2 a.m. where I'm at. This is so exciting. Hey, Wikimedia. Sorry, I can't help myself. Um, yes. So I now have to remember the question. The For patrollers, if they violate um if you're saying if, if they're doing bad stuff it is a violation of the access to temp i'm going to get the sorry to amp right access to temporary account ip addresses policy which is separate from the access to non-public personal data policy um because patrollers do not sign the access to non-public personal data policy and so this is a separate agreement and so this would be a violation of that separate agreement um and like you said there's a scale issue that this would be a lot more users having access to this information. This is where we are figuring things out, honestly, because I, I don't think, like under the current policy, you as on the Ombuds Commission know <laughs> what it looks like for check users and other um, policy violations of the ANPDP. Um, under the separate policy, yes, we need more people to have access. There's more room for people to do wrong. I think ultimately, as we are rolling out, um, like legal is not looking at good faith actors trying to make um, problems for people. We want to help people get used to this new environment, um, but still, that doesn't mean that people need like people who are abusing this access. Obviously, um, they should have their access removed to um, the temporary account IP addresses. But for more of the, I think you, you probably face some of the more fringe um, issues with check users and you probably see a lot of like unique circumstances and like some gray areas. Um, there'll be a lot of gray areas here, but I think like, um, and we're, we're obviously going to keep working with you and the Ombuds Commission, um, the rest of the commission about like how to deal with this. Um, there needs to be a period of grace, at least in my opinion, because this is a massive change for users. And so one day flipping the switch and having users just have to live up to like this new expectation and know exactly from the get go how to treat this information. It's gonna be a hard change. And so we wanna help users get through that change. And that means working with the Ombuds Commission as far as um, how to do that, working with the users how to do that, and also um, being clear 
I think like it's just been an ongoing conversation with stewards too about what we can do for um, like when people abuse this tool. And so legal doesn't have all the answers there because we aren't, I am not an advanced right user other than being a staff member. And so, yes, I guess that is all getting through here is that yes, your concerns are definitely heard, being considered, working on things, but I think a lot of grace will also be needed. And that is what I in legal am expecting to also advocate for is that give time for people to get used to this environment. Um, and we will all work together. Okay, I've been told that the session needs to end now, so that'll be the end of the questions. If you want to ask me questions about this, I'm happy to take loads of questions because we want to know about your workflows that will be broken. So come to speak to me. I'll probably hand out, hang outside. Or, or Shimon. Yes, so you've got several people to ask, um, just in case I'm too busy.